Recording is on. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the Plenty CMS stuff that we've been working on. So this is kind of a follow-up video to the auth stuff that, that we looked at last week. So I was pulling in Jesse's work with the Pixie GitLab auth into a Plenty project, and we had some basically workflow going. We were um, getting the request uh, working the first time, but then the actual authorization step was getting some errors. But I think that is all resolved. So I just want to take a look there. So I'm going to share my screen. And uh, I have a temp project here with all that project code. So I'm just going to open this up in Codium so we can take a look at that. And let's expand this. Trust. Okay. So this is the project. Um, mm -hmm. We open up a terminal and I'm just going to serve up the project. And I'll just, let me see if I can copy this. Oop. Okay. I want to actually open this up in an incognito window so we don't get too many crazy cast artifacts. Okay. So um, basically, go to the login page. From here, you press login. This brings us to GitLab, does a redirect, add your credentials, sign in. And now I'm welcome with um, uh, an access token. And so, nice. so I think it's it's basically working, which is good. Um, yeah. I, I'll just go through some of the code that I updated to, to kind of show some of the stuff that was changed. So um, let's come here and go to our layouts. Right now, all this is kind of living in the CMS folder. Basically, most of it's in here. Um, the entry point is over here in admin. So that's, that's our entry point. Let's keep that open. And let's not worry about that. And then let's open up our auth. So I've changed things around um, a little bit in here. So the first thing I wanted to mention, um, I know, Jesse, you said that um, some of the, uh, like it was important to get a, a hash that was acceptable in the URL and GitLab was very specific about that. So there were some regex that I had deleted, right? So I went through and I added it again. So there's a quirk here and I'm not, this must be a plenty quirk. So uh, I need to double escape this backslash. Um, so previously this looked, yeah. So previously this looked like this. Um, let me save that and you'll see the error. So you get um, this error in your cons console here um, that talks about invalid regular expression. So it doesn't know what it's repeating. So it's got the plus, but it doesn't know what's repeating. So it's just a double escaping of that seems to do it. I don't know if somehow when I'm processing, I might be removing, I can't, honestly, there's so many kind of pre-process things happening. That I might be removing removing this first one automatically, and then it's it's being valid. I'm not sure. Um, I'm hoping mm -hmm. that it's still working. It's possible that by doing this, the regex isn't working at all. Um, but for whatever reason, when I add it, it seems to the, the login workflow seems to work. So I I figured that might or, be. Are okay. you somehow handling the regex as JSON in your uh, in the plenty <laughs> compiler? Yeah, regex as JSON. I don't know. Um, because JSON also accepts. Uh, escapes with the backslash. Okay, yeah. I, but the other text f code formats also do so. There's yeah. something going on there. Yeah, I could I could dig a little deeper. I'm to be honest, I'm not sure. I, I feel like I had honestly this came to me because I feel like I had done this before, and again, like these things just kind of like in in one ear out the other sometimes. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> I feel like I've run into this before. And I realized that, so I, I did that just because it was familiar to me, but I can't remember the reasoning behind. I can search through the issue key to see if I can figure out what's going on there. Um, I am curious, maybe I should do some testing with console logging to see if I actually am doing this replacing correctly or if basically we're back to where we were when this wasn't here at all. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but for but whatever reason. Work, so yeah. you probably done it right. Yeah, yeah, so it's working. Um, so I think we're in good shape there. Uh, another thing that, um, I, I did. I, I renamed some of these things. So uh, this was the start function. So I just renamed it to like what it's actually doing, the request off code, mm -hmm. um, capture request uh, access token, <clears throat> and then yep. uh, request refresh token here. Um, mm -hmm. And then I also just kind of, uh, not that this is super important, but I, I, I got rid of the uh, kind of like the if statement um, to kind of like go through the process. Like, oh, do you have the, um, you know, do you have the state and do you have the appropriate stuff? Like, you, should we be starting or capturing? And I moved a lot of that kind of information like, that kind of like logic over into here. So basically what we're doing now is um, we set up our login button, right? So we, we check if we have our user 
Um, and we're basically getting our user from our GitLab tokens. So we only get this once the capture is complete, right? Um, so, uh, so do we have our user? No, don't do the welcome screen. Okay, then show a button where we're we're running the request auth code, which is that first step from from that auth, right? That's this this mm. here. Um, once that's run, uh, basically we should have parameters at the point. And actually, this is always uh, so. This is a magic prop that I created in Plenty. Um, uh, it's it's basically. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, search params, uh, JavaScript concept. Mm -hmm. It's basically a way to get the parameters from, get, from get the URL. Parameters. Yeah, get parameters. Yep. Yeah, ex exactly. So it's just that. So this actually, um, even when we don't have query strings, this does return something. Um, but as long as uh, this the state in here is not null, um, and then it, it actually equals here, then we'll run this uh, request access token. So this is that second part that used to be called capture. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just pass the code um, uh, parameter to it. So that's uh, normally that's in the URL before we do that refresh. So then that goes through, it runs our uh, request access token that we had talked about before. And then finally at this stage, um, assuming that we don't error out here, uh, obviously we we set um, uh, the storage here. Now, <clears throat> um, and this is basically once we set this uh, local storage to our token, that's when we can start getting our user information, right? So that's when over here we say, okay, now we finally have our user. Um, uh, you know, as long as the component can be mounted. Um, and then once you have the user, uh, basically down here, it says, okay, we have a user. Now we can do a welcome screen instead of our login button. So that, that's, that's basically what's happening. Hmm. Um, I know, uh, so I actually was Googling around a little bit. So uh, previously you had set up basically the session storage and then this um, local storage here. And you were, yep. you were saving basically the, uh, the GitLab token and local storage, and you were saving the state and the, um, code verifier information in session storage. And I was looking around just to kind of, you know, understand when you should use one or another. Um, so like these issues kind of talk about a little bit. So it's uh, talking about like, um, you know, local storage will persist longer than session storage essentially, right? So this is only available per tab. And then I noticed um, in your Dino branch that you actually have changed over to all session storage. Is that correct? Yeah, I was, it was probably a bug that I, work through well, like uh, work worked around because session storage wasn't working for me at that uh -huh. time or or then i wanted to hit to remember the login I, i'm not sure anymore okay yeah that's uh, okay so it wasn't like you weren't like oh we have to do it this way because of whatever okay um yeah. because yeah because this is the, the new dino branch right and this is your auth um, and most of the stuff here, you, you're direct. So you, it seems like you don't call out to those helper classes anymore. You're just doing it directly, yeah. right? You're using session storage um, and then you're, you're doing the full thing here. Um, so a lot of this, like the, you know, the null and then like the uh, JSON stringify stuff, like previously you were pulling that out into uh, these classes, right? These these individual classes, you were kind of doing that information yeah. like the, the session storage and the stringify and all that. So um, I just kept with the the way that we were doing it before. So I'm, I'm still mm -hmm. saving, um, you can see over here, let's go to the application. So I'm still saving the, the token information to the local storage. Um, and then the session storage has uh, the the um, state in the code verifier. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's important, maybe it's not. Um, we can, uh, for now it's working. So I'm not too too overly concerned about which which we're doing there. Uh, yeah. If we decide there's- It's probably, it should be up to you, user at the end. Mm. If she, she or he wants to, uh, re remember the login. Yeah. Like remember me checkbox. That's a good point. Yeah. So if if choosing the remember me, uh, yeah. then yeah, that's a great point. Actually, I should. Uh, well, I guess we're making a note of it right now since we're recording this. I was going to make a personal note. Yeah. Um, that that's a good idea. That's a that's a cool feature. Um, the other thing that um, was adjusted here uh, again. So uh, basically. Um, in order to get, and maybe there's a more clever way to do this. I thought I might be able to use a key, um, a key block to do this, but I, I couldn't get it to work. So essentially, I wanted this user to kick off again after the capture was done. Uh, well, now we're calling it um, access token. Um, so once this is done, I wanted to make sure that this actually refreshes and gets this because previously um, we were using like a, a history um, push uh, event to, to basically change the URL to get rid of the the query parameters, right? So. This, yep. this normally would have the query parameters and you made it so it pushed away from the query parameters. The the only unfortunate thing is it wasn't 
switching over to this, I was still seeing like the login button. So what I did is I just, um, I hard refreshed um, with with a, a a link refresh. So um, just to mm. just to get that, there might be a more clever way to do that, but for now, that's just what I what I did there. Um, yeah. Um, maybe if we turn the storage into a Svelte store, then we could listen to it. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I was wondering if this would be a good spot for for Svelte stores um, as yeah. well. So that's uh, something I've been thinking about. Um, then okay. would reactively refresh that. Yeah. View. Yep. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, I was yeah, I was thinking about that too. So that's something we can play around with. Again, those things are like not super critical at this point, right? And yeah. and I've been thinking through like. Um, and I don't think I have any answers, but I've been thinking through like, <clears throat> how can we make this a set of tools so people have flexibility, but also something where they don't feel like they're rigging up their own yeah. auth every every time, right? And so um, I, I don't know if I have answers yet, but what I've started doing on, so this is actually a temp repository just to kind of show you where um, I'm at today, but uh, I have another repository over here um, that I'm starting to actually pull some of this stuff out. So um, instead of being in the, um, uh, the layouts here, I've actually moved these into the ejectable core. So, so there's a, a core in plenty that's ejectable um, where we have the router and we have the main JS and everything. So yeah, let me show you kind of what, uh, let me show you in this other repository actually. Um, so plenty has this concept that we can do plenty eject. And these are core files that we hide from people. So um, you can see here that we can eject our live reload script, our, our main entry point or our router. Um, and then we want our CMS probably ultimately to live in here as well. So if I, you know, for instance, if I want to look at the folders right now, we have content layouts, no modules, et cetera, right? But I, we can create that ejected folder here by ejecting our router. Oops, sorry, I come back over to this window. Eject our router, for instance. Um, it gives us a little warning saying if this is ejected, you know, you, you're on your own for this now, you know, like obviously these core updates that we do to the router are going, you're not going to get it because you're, you're managing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. I say, yes, I understand that. Um, it, it creates the folder ejected and now I have my router that I can fully mess around with. Right. This is where we're actually um, starting to create a lot of magic props. Um, we do some of this work in the actual, the main um, uh, entry point as well. So um it's not all done in here, but this is where you can start playing with this. And I'm thinking that this might be a good place where we could actually start um, creating some of that, that user information and offloading some of that stuff. And then having also like a CMS folder in here that's all ejectable that is only messed when people want to mess with it. Again, don't mm -hmm. don't you worry about this too much. I'm playing around with it. I have to do some plenty updates um, to make this even work. Um, but I'm thinking that this might be a good way to abstract some of this stuff and then um, potentially we could pass even user as like a, a magic thing that people could start manipulating and adding to their own um, website. Yeah. But mm. I need, I need to think through it a little bit more. Um, I've, I've started working on, so basically I've been updating um, the actual uh, plenty project to, to allow, because right now it doesn't actually know how to do anything with the CMS, even if it's in the ejectable core. Mm. So I've been starting to update it. So it actually worked. And you see that I'm having some path issues here. So right now this, uh, sorry, the public is our, our public fo build folder. Um, now this this SPA ejected should actually be written into this folder here inside SPA ejected. So right now it's not yeah. getting that extra slash. So there's there's a bunch of things I have to do. Um, I also have to get it into um, what's called the embedded file system. So basically, uh, the way that um, Go works is it has this uh, this file system where you can embed other um, files into its binary. So there's a lot of things that I'll have to do to get this working. Um, I'm going to play around with that some more. But uh, that's just kind of that, that might be next on my docket to to get things moving in that direction. Just wanted to cue you in on on kind of what I'm working on there. Um, yeah, sounds good. Cool. Um, what else? Let's see. So Jack the core. Yep. That's. Um, oh, and also I just want to mention that like kind of building the router. So obviously the router gets access to doing things that you you couldn't necessarily do um, in in your normal project, right? Because this actually mm -hmm. this this router. Um, does not like the SSR build actually goes through and starts at like the HTML level. Um, so you you know your HTML level and actually skips out on the router. So you can do all kind of your browser style stuff in this file that you you wouldn't want to necessarily do in the build because we do um, uh, static HTML rendering and, and like it doesn't know things about like your browser window. So we can do that kind of stuff in here, which is nice. Um, uh, yeah. Then I so I guess um, besides that, Jesse, uh, I, I think. Um, just thinking through our next steps of, of, I know we were talking before we started the recording, just uh, of how we're going to actually write back to the, the Git repository. I know you've done 
some work on that before. So understanding that those API commands, um, I know at some point we're gonna have to figure out how to specifically target like a repo. Like right now we have the, <clears throat> the group level application and that's kind of this over here, right? So it's like we have our group um, mm -hmm. OAuth app, but at some point we have to actually decide that, you know, wh wh which uh, repository we're in, right? Cause this is a group level, but we wanna be actually in like this specific project. So we'll have to, you know, do that kind of information. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with that because you've, you've dealt yeah. with the API a little bit, but. Although just... I've, I've created the last project for GitHub, GitHub. So uh, um, yeah, GitLab, I think it should be far easier actually. Yeah, it seems, um, sorry, let me, uh, how do I stop sharing? It, it, did I stop sharing? Is that good? Yep. Um, it seems like, yeah, GitLab seems like it does, has more features than GitHub in, in terms of like its authentication, at least from, you know, from someone looking at, you know, for the first time, not too deeply, but like the fact that it supports like a pixie auth. And I was trying to see if Git, GitHub does this because I, I understand why they didn't want to um, support implicit grant because implicit grant has these security um, vulnerabilities potentially, but, but pixie seems like it's a pretty good option. It just seems like they don't have a ton of interest in doing that. And it, I don't know, it just seems like GitLab has way more in terms of at least this kind of ecosystem. Like for instance, yeah. when you're doing static site hosting, um, GitLab allows you to do like group permissioning where you actually can host a static site that is not accessible to the, the world. That's only accessible to members in your group. Um, and I just feel like it's just way ahead in terms of those type of features. So I think this is the right approach to go is starting here and then going to GitHub eventually. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. I, I know we're, we're still, we're still at the <laughs> beginning of this. Um, and there's a lot to go, but I feel like I'm seeing the vision and I think this could be really cool. Um, so yeah, and the work that you did has been awesome. Like it's it's made a lot of sense. The code you've written is is great. It's uh, easy to follow and it's been pretty robust. So um, again, thanks for, for all the effort. And uh, yeah, is there anything else that you want to discuss in terms of like any of this? Any questions on anything I looked at? Um, no, not currently any. I'll, I'll be doing the uh, commit, committing to Git, GitLab stuff soon at the weekend probably cool and, um yeah i have nothing to add then okay cool yeah if yeah whenever you get a chance to do that um yeah yeah keep, keep me posted if you have any like if you ever want to um chat about anything you know i'm always there to, to chat about it but yeah. um yeah i'm excited for that next step it's gonna be sweet yeah <laughs> cool all right i'll kill the recording <laughs>